Welcome back to the channel everyone, this is AJ. Got a new film review for you. So the other day I was just going through Amazon Spain and I came across this film here, below. So let's talk about it. Okay, yeah, I was super excited when I saw this on Amazon. I've been after this on Blu-ray for a long, long time. And I didn't realise that it had come out in, in Spain. I had looked before in places, um, but to no avail. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, dink, order. I've got to order this film. I love this film. I love it. Um, yeah, what can I say? Okay, let me talk about this film here below. Just look at that. Look at it. I'm so, so excited. I was excited and I've watched it straight away. Um, it's a film I remember and, and it just sits with me and I just love it. Um, so this film is from 2002, below. It was released in the US on October the 18th of that year with a restricted rating, 15 here in the UK, and a runtime of one hour and 45 minutes um, on a $40 million budget. Now. The film has a lot of cast members in it that you will know their faces, right? Main star is Bruce Greenwood. Now, Bruce Greenwood, he's a fantastic actor, and I love Bruce Greenwood. You may know him as Captain um, Christopher Pike in the first two J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies. He's in those. Um, he was also in... I mean, he's in loads of stuff. He's been in films like The Core, um, 13 Days... A wealth of wealth of film. He's got about 150 odd um, movie credits to his name and he's an actor that should be far bigger than what he actually is. Um, and I remember him from a TV series called Nowhere Man. This fantastic series. Only last one season and it was about a man who walks, who goes into a, he's, he's in a restaurant with his wife having something to eat. Um, goes off to the toilet, comes back out. She's there with another bloke and or has she vanished she may have vanished but anyway no one remembers him being there no one knows who he is and all this sort of stuff when he no that's it. she's vanished she's vanished he comes out the toilet and she's gone and he starts panicking doesn't know where she is his bank cards don't work nothing works the people in the restaurant don't know him they don't think he's ever been there sat there eating all this sort of stuff um there's a restaurant he goes into often and then he goes home to his 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 house and she's there she doesn't know who he is and then he's, another bloke is there who's her husband and all this sort of stuff going on and it's all to do with this mystery around this photo that he's taken of this killing out in the woods out in like you know um somewhere in south america i believe it to be you know military killing and all this sort of stuff uh, and there's a lot of intrigue throughout the series and, and what's going on but only that they were forced to answer the question straight away the, the studio mandated that the, the the TV company making it had to give an answer to what's going on and then it subsequently got cancelled because the mystery had all gone. Um, but anyway, I, I, I digress. So Bruce Green, a fantastic actor. Um, next up, you've got the likes of Olivia Williams in a starring role on it. Um, Jason Fleming, who you would know from a wealth of stuff as well. Zach Galifianakis in a, in a major serious role before he'd done The Hangover, as well as a wealth of other talent that you will recognise from other stuff. So this film here is set on board a World War II submarine called the Tiger Shark. Um, and what happens is we open up with Bruce Greenwood and his crew finding a small lifeboat with three people on board that they, they bring on to their vessel um, one being Olivia Williams and one being a, a guy close to death and another an English sailor and as it turns out they were they were part of a medical ship that was um, sunk by a German U-boat um, and they're the only survivors brought on board um, now bringing a woman onto a submarine is brings bad luck to submariners um, and, and thusly weird things start going on sort of ghostly apparitions and all this sort of stuff um, noises that can be put down to possibly the external factors in the sea or stuff going on weird stuff going on on board the ship um, as the story progresses we do find out that there have been stuff that's gone on um, 
amongst the crew and amongst the captain and all this sort of thing. Um, and it all leads to this mystery being unraveled all the while strange stuff um, occurring. Um, yes, yeah, so it's a World War set, World War Two set, submarine, drama stroke, horror type of a movie. Um, not horror, more sort of like, like a ghost story, that sort of a thing. Um, now this film was written by Lucas Sussman, Darren Aronofsky, who's a very famous director. He's directed The Wrestler, Requiem for a Dream, and Black Swan, along as, uh, among another, a lot of other stuff. And, and written by David Twohey, who was the film's director. Now David Twohey has directed the um, Vin Diesel Pitch Black Riddick movies, um, and that's where I knew him from. And and so the minute I saw this, I wanted to watch this because that film, first Riddick film, Pitch Black, was fantastic. And this does use some of the same um, sort of tropes that that uses in in the sense of the darkness and that sort of a thing. Um, yes. So this film for me, I remember seeing it back in the day. When it first came out, it wasn't a cinema view. I don't even know if it got cinema release in this country. If it did, it would have been very small. But I watched it on DVD and put it out, and I loved it. I loved it. Not just because of Bruce Greenwood, but because it's World War Two set. I love World War Two setting. Um, submarine films. I love submarine films. I'm not too up on the ghost story stuff, but it worked here. It just it all came together for me, and 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 I loved it. I loved this film. Um, the act in it is is very good. The effects are very good. Um, I can't really fault, you know, the, the pacing of the film or anything like that. For me, it's just a wonderful, wonderful film that worked. Um, I think different people have different opinions on this film. This be one that splits people's opinion and divides. But for me, um, I was just so excited to see that it got Blu-ray release and I had to get it straight away and watch it straight away. It looks fantastic on Blu-ray um, and I love it. So yeah, a very, very good film. Now, um, the soundtrack is, is it, it, it adds to the mystique of the film, um, adds to what's going on and, and puts you in the right mood for the scenes. There are jump scares in it that, that may get you a first time round and an air of claustrophobia as these individuals are all trapped within the confines of this small US submarine, World War II submarine, which was much smaller than the nuclear subs you get of today, obviously. Um, it, it does have the sort of World War II type of you know, submarine drama that you'd expect with ships topside dropping mines and all that sort of thing as well as all this other stuff going on. So a very, very good, enjoyable film from me. Um, so let's talk about some of the trivia for the film. I've only got a couple for you. Okay, so... A lot of this film was actually filmed with inside a real World War II submarine called the USS Silversides, which um, is a museum submarine. There's in fact a scene within the film where you see characters come out of the tor tor torpedo room and walk up a flight of stairs. Now, submarines didn't have flights of stairs, they had ladders. Um, and in this, the flights of stairs are there because they're in built into the submarine now for visitors to get up and down as opposed to climbing a ladder. Um, scenes with Bruce Greenwood on the submarine were you know on top of the submarine in the middle of the ocean were actually filmed with this submarine being towed into the middle of Lake Michigan and being filmed there. Darren Aronofsky was not originally meant to direct the film, um, and if he had, it would have been more of a straight out horror movie. Um, so he came away and just went to write his credit because he decided to go and film Requiem for a Dream instead, and that's when David Twohey came on board as director, which didn't, in my opinion, didn't affect the film. It ain't like I'm thinking, oh, I'd rather see Darren Aronofsky's version, who's a wonderful director. Um, I very much like this film as it is. So there you go, a quick review on this film, a film that I love, a film that I can recommend you watch um, because I really like it. There we go, this is AJ. Thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button, come join the channel. If you have seen this film, please let me know your thoughts on it 
in the comments below. Um, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care all and goodbye.